Ozone's impact is all about location. High in the stratosphere, ozone shields us from the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays. Beneath that, at the top of the troposphere, it acts as a greenhouse gas and contributes to global warming. In the middle of the troposphere, it plays a key role in a chemical process that cleans the air of certain pollutants. In this project, RP Duo worked in collaboration with SCI and NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies. The project was about communicating science through art. And to do that, uh, we used sonification of data in order to raise awareness of the scientific issue. The issue in this case was ozone being harmful for uh, human health. New York. Music was the medium of communication and sonification was the method uh, we used. So we used different kinds of sonification. Uh, some of it was parameter mapping, mapping pitch, uh, controlling the improvisation. We selected 10 notes from the trumpet's range uh, to uh, correspond to the values of the ozone. So the concentration uh, of ozone was dictating the pitch. It was changing the filter parameters, the uh, decay of the drums, so the higher concentration, the larger the decay. I've been involved in the scientific underpinning of the ozone data sonification project. And there's been a lot of interest in uh, tropospheric ozone in the last few years because it has climate effects, it has effects on human health, and it also affects crop yields. The data we're using in this project is courtesy of the NASA TESS infrared spectrometer, which is flying aboard the Aura satellite orbiting the Earth. So it, takes the it can measure the ozone concentration right down through the profile of the atmosphere. And from that data, we can extract the, the portion that is at ground level. We took the, uh, the data, we scaled it, uh, and it was sent to the drum machine via MIDI uh, to change the parameters dynamically. And also, the drum machine was driving the clock, so we are going from month to month and playing each data during that period of time. For the sonification study, we're focusing on tropospheric ozone at ground level. So this is ozone that can be breathed in by the population and cause premature mortality and other health effects. Um, we're using data from six locations around the globe and they've been chosen to show how tropospheric ozone concentrations vary from place to place depending on where you are. And the six sites we use in the study are three megacities, so three large cities, London, New York and Beijing. And there's some contrast you can see between those and the levels of pollution there. And then we have the Sahara, where there's high levels of sunlight, so making tropospheric ozone. And then the Amazon, where you have a lot of um, natural precursors from the background vegetation, volatile organic compounds. And then a background site, which is New Zealand, where we expect low levels of ozone. So we contrast those six sites. The piece was divided uh, by these uh, locations, so we're going from one to another. So I was more active, was playing more rhythmic uh, material while the concentration of ozone was higher, for example in Beijing or New York, while uh, the pieces for New Zealand and Amazon were more atmospheric uh, because the concentration was lower. New Zealand, typical of background levels found in southern hemisphere, where precursor emissions are relatively low, low impacts on human health and premature mortality. In New York, I was using different mutes to explore the different uh, locations of the uh, sonified data, but I felt that doing that was actually treating the data unfairly, and I was looking to be more consistent across. So if I play whatever pitch for Beijing, A4, it needs to be the same sound for New York, A4, or Amazon. I think the consistency is very important in this piece and I chose to remove mutes from the, the performance. If we have A4 in one piece, why do I treat that differently with a mute or different gestural qualities? If we're trying to be exact with the data, you can't change the, the timbre because the data still is the same and I'm affecting 
the data by changing the, the timbre quality of the instrument. The, um, the reason why I got interested in the project, on the sonification project, was um, to increase the awareness of the issue. So I'm, I'm quite excited about uh, how it's come out because it, I think it operates on three levels. So first of all, it's a piece of music in its own right. So Radek and his uh, trumpet player Matt have really done a good job of turning ozone data into a piece of music which can be enjoyed in its own right. Uh, on the second level, it's uh, people who come to listen to to the, to the project will be exposed to the ozone uh, issue and about the human health effects. So, it, on, so the second point is it creates awareness, which is one aspect we're very interested in at SCI. And then the third aspect is really it can also be used as a data analysis tool. So using music you might be able to see the differences in, in the data that might not be so obvious to the human eye. SCI has um, been involved in coordinating a big study that came out uh, two years ago called the Integrated Assessment of Black Carbon and Tropospheric Ozone. And in here we looked at measures that can be taken to reduce concentrations of uh, tropospheric ozone in the atmosphere and get the attendant benefits. As a result of this study and, and studies that followed, action is now being considered to reduce tropospheric ozone around the globe. And at SCI, we're very interested in sonification project to generally raise the awareness of the issue.